Hi, I'm Alexandra Barker. Welcome to Relief Beyond Belief, Exploring the World of Natural Healing. Today we're going to be talking about spring cleaning. But don't change the channel, we're not talking about cleaning your house. In this case, we're actually talking about spring cleaning your body. And my guest is clinical nutritionist Heidi Mayer, who's going to discuss with us how ways that we can do a cleanse um, to benefit our health and, uh, and ward off any sorts of health difficulties. So hi, Heidi, thank you for coming. Thank you very much, glad to be here. So just to begin with, a, a cleanse, um, now that, that can take many different forms, so I'll let you elaborate a little bit about that. Now when you talk about taking a cleanse, are you talking about using supplements to do that, or just changing your food, eating more nutritious foods, or how exactly do we uh, or fast? Many yeah. different forms, I'm sure. But. Yeah, that's a really good question, and there's a lot of um, misconceptions about cleanses or detoxing, as it's commonly referred to. And all of the uh, things that you had mentioned, Alexandra, such as supplements or uh, fasting or changing the food in the diet, those uh, may be all part of a cleanse. And um, cleanses or detox, as they're commonly referred to, are now becoming a regular practice among uh, people who are uh, health conscious. And the protocols can be individualized um, to include or to incorporate all those modalities. So in other words, diet, um, supplements, a little bit of fasting, but that one people generally had the idea previously that they don't eat anything and just fast with water, which is not the idea of a cleanse or a detox. Because that could be a little bit hard, hard to take. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, how would you approach this? If you haven't done it before, how would you even know if, if you were due for a cleanse or if you were a good candidate for, or a detox? I don't know, I, I tend to like to call them a cleanse. It just sounds a little more, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question, too, because some of the um, symptoms of, of um, in other words, toxicity or what we commonly clinical nutritionists term the toxic load, I mean, our digestive organs... Uh, and organs of metabolism like the stomach, the intestines, the liver, the pancreas. Over time, they're very good to us, and we all don't tend to eat exactly as we're supposed to every day. And they will carry us, they will carry that load. In other words, they'll do their best to break that food down that we've eaten and assimilate it into living tissue. If there's a lot of junk food in the diet or the body becomes stressed over time uh, because of chemicals in the environment and the food that's being eaten on a regular basis, then those organ systems become stressed and the toxic load reaches a, a peak and then symptoms start to manifest. It could be as simple as um, eczema, any types of skin rashes, um, Acne, boils, cysts, those are in the same family. That's an indication, for example, that the glandular endocrine system has taken the brunt of the stress that's uh, of our diet and our so, lifestyle. Oh. So then would you address it, would you just kind of go by whatever symptoms you might be experiencing and then say, okay, this is, say you're having rashes and you would address that, that system first or, or just do like an overall cleanse? Um, detox? <laughs> yeah, we, we can do, we can approach it several different ways, Alexandra, and the most important thing is client compliance. In other words, it has to suit the, the type of detox or cleanse and the duration of time, because a lot of people say a weekend to start only, and then they can extend it from there, but it has to be um, uh, user-friendly, if you will. In other words, it has to be a protocol that suits the individual's lifestyle. Uh, so, for example, even just moving away from more congesting foods in the diet, which tend to be uh, meats, organ meats, refined processed foods, saturated fats, drugs and chemicals, caffeine, tobacco, of course, these Dairy. are things, <laughs> sugary foods that are congesting and move to a less congesting diet. Even that, for someone who has never done a seasonal cleanse before, uh, that would be a good place to start, to move to a less congesting diet. 
So now I have heard, well, I've actually experienced, but uh, I'm sure lots of people who have tried it have noticed that when, you, when they are embarking on the cleanse, they often experience headaches and some other less pleasant symptoms as, uh, you know, and, and it actually increases as, you know, as that goes on. So I'll let you sort of address that and why that is, and uh, is there a way to alleviate that so you have a more of a gentle kind of a experience? Not everybody has, you know, wants to take to the bed for a week just to get a good mm -hmm. cleanse done. So that's a very valid concern because people often say, well, I don't, if I can't leave the house, but that's not necessarily the case because certainly with a liver or a gallbladder flush, which uh, incorporates a lot of oils and they're passing stones in the stool. So certainly that type of cleanse would be uh, more suited to like a weekend stay at home type of um, mm -hmm. cleansing or detox but a general cleansing program or a mild cleansing program or symptoms that manifest that the cleanse is is happening too quickly is actually a sign to help streamline or refine the the protocol the detox or the cleansing protocol for the individual so headaches as you as had mentioned is a very common symptom of, um, of, t of detoxing. It can also be a symptom of toxicity because after a while the liver, if it's stressed, the, uh, will send, it circulates in the bloodstream and eventually hits the brain and if there are food sensitivities and or allergies or intolerances, foods that the body cannot assimilate properly, they will manifest as symptoms such as migraines um, and headaches. And if that happens during a detox, then the individual, the person doing it is told to streamline. In other words, they may have to have a cup of coffee if they haven't done without one for two, for a day or two and they're getting pounding headaches and that usually resolves it. So then we know that coffee is the problem and we work at eliminating it and replacing mm -hmm. it with something else or adding a supplement to help with the detox of caffeine. Well, that's very good. So, um, so what sorts of things should you expect? Should you almost go into it prepared to have some of these physical things happening, or to you know, Alexander, to do a really good detox, and even if it's for a day, you do require some mental preparation. In other words, the mind and body. The body will manifest as symptoms, and often people say, "I've had these symptoms for so long." But in their mind, they say, I'm not ready to change my diet, do a cleanse. It really requires some, pre some mental preparation. It's not an elaborate procedure by any means. It's not something that, uh, that is beyond the scope of most people's um, ability to, to do. You need the desire to do it. Uh, you need to know why you're doing it. And, um, and work from there. And if, you know, there are ways of of looking at how toxic your system is with some of the testing that we do in the clinic. Okay, and we'll come back to that if we have uh, some more time later on. And I'm just wondering now, for someone who, is in, who considers themselves to be in good health, um, what would, would there really be really tangible benefits to doing a detox? Like say you have, say you exercise, you get massages periodically, um, you eat well, but you just you figure okay over the years probably there there has been some you know maybe a little bit of neglect to the diet or whatever so maybe there could be some improvements but would they be tangible that's a good question too um certainly a comprehensive lifestyle that inc or, or working towards the optimum that you can be physically and mentally is incorporating things like exercise and diet time for relaxation de-stressing techniques like meditation and yoga, breathing exercises. Um, I, I would honestly have to say that today, um, because I do a lot of research on food and how food is changing, and um, today it is virtually impossible to get all of the nutritional requirements from uh, our food supply. In other words, there's the, the minerals are lacking in the soil, you would have to eat whole, fresh, live, organic foods every day for every meal because of the environmental pollution and stress and other factors in our lives that contribute to the toxic load. 
And then you probably wouldn't need a cleanse, but you'd still need a little bit of a rest because to give your system, your organ systems that are, are really looking after all your food for you, a little bit of a rest. But uh, today I'd say it's pretty much, um, it is becoming very popular, cleansing and detoxing. Um, it is becoming part of a, a, a seasonal protocol for people, in other words, bi-yearly, maybe once a year to start. Um, everybody has their own little way. I do it a little bit on the weekends because, you know, you can, there's cleanses that can go for 21 days and people really feel rejuvenated after that. Um, I personally wouldn't, you know, like I find it really hard to do one for 20 days, so I break it up into seven three-day periods. But That'd definitely easier to take. Yeah. And what sort of uh, detox would that be? It targets the main organs of metabolism and digestion, which are the liver, the kidney, and the colon. And we've all heard about colonics, that you can get colonics done, that there's a buildup of sludge over time, especially if your bowel habits aren't really good. Uh, the liver, because the liver is the first bypass in the body, and everything goes through the liver. It's the what we call the CPU, or central processing unit. So it really needs... Uh, some help and um, the the colon so the the protocols are geared towards those three organ systems and they're concentrated herbal extracts or supplements while the diet because I give a special protocol for the diet say if somebody's doing it for a weekend what can they eat so things like juicing to replenish enzymes in the pancreas food combining which, uh, um, you know, the major macronutrients are fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. So enzyme replacement to help with the digestion of those major food groups. And wherever there's some weaknesses, as you'd mentioned before, in the glandular endocrine system, those organs are targeted. Watching Relief Beyond Belief, I'm your host, Alexandra Barker, and we're talking about cleansing and detoxing your body with clinical nutritionist Heidi Mayer. So Heidi, you mentioned earlier that it's good for people to kind of prepare themselves mentally for, for, with, when they're about to embark on a cleanse or a detox. So how would they go about doing that and just kind of getting their bodies ready, getting rid of, you know, eliminating whatever they can to begin with and kind of getting, you know, their minds ready sure. and prepared too? It's very, um, it's very helpful for people to understand exactly what a cleanse or a detox is. And in order for that to really um, have an impact, in other words, that they're ready to take the next step, um, some background on what good digestion is. Because the majority of people uh, suffer a myriad of symptoms that are associated with poor digestion, but they um, ignore them. And, and that can be even like sinus conditions, can't exactly. it? Exactly. Stuff like that you, that you would not necessarily associate with your digestion. So, yeah. Things like um, a lot of gas, uh, belching and burping after consuming a meal. Um, That's not normal? That's not a compliment to the chef? <laughs> <laughs> not always, no, because chronic persistent, like most people do not, um, there, there are about five pounds of, of bacteria. I won't get too technical, but I'll just make this point because this is critical. There's about five pounds of bacteria that normally reside in the gastrointestinal tract. And if your digestive capacity is operating at peak condition, you'll have a very good balance of that microbial flora, as we call it. If you eat foods that your body cannot digest, and they're also very poor in enzymes, that would be an example. Deep fried foods, cooked foods are devoid of enzymes, a lot of foods that are taxing on the digestive organs. Your and your digestive capacity is diminished, something has to happen to that food. So your bacteria takes over in your small intestine and they digest it for you, but they're not really digesting it, they're putrefying it. And that's where the acid and gas comes from, mm. things like gastroesophageal reflux, 
is also associated with signs of toxicity, um, the gas, irregular bowel habits, things like constipation, um, diarrhea, or alternating bouts of both. These are all signs that the digestive system is, um, is not functioning the way it should be. And people tend to overlook a lot of these symptoms because they have access to OTCs, which are over-the-counter uh, oh, things yeah. like Maalox or antacids that will uh, alleviate their symptoms, but it does not address the underlying cause. Of the, you know, of yeah. the, it doesn't address the underlying cause, and, and at the same time, the toxic load builds, and, and then it predisposes for other more serious illnesses. Yeah, and I think that's the big concern, isn't it? Because it can lead to some really very serious illnesses that can be easily corrected just by addressing and by doing a nice basic cleanse. So what would a good, just a very gentle, something that people might even want to experiment a little bit with at home? I mean, obviously it's optimal to go to, a, you know, someone such as yourself for professional advice, but even if they just wanted to say, okay, let's just try it for a weekend. And maybe rather than just go on like a juice or water cleanse, I mean, I think we've all heard of the one with the water and cayenne pepper and maple syrup and, and that's all you drink and that's all, that's all you consume all day. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty heavy duty for, <laughs> for a beginner. What would you suggest for just a gentle... I like that question because especially with the maple syrup and lime juice, that's a popular cleanse in the spring. And most people today have such a stressful life that on weekends they're not really prepared to, uh, to undertake something that's not going to be pleasant and then jump back into the work week. But generally speaking, the more often you undertake a cleanse and the health benefits that you'll derive from that, the easier it gets to do it. And for the person at home, uh, say perhaps watching the show or perhaps reading the article in in this um, season's Relief Beyond Belief about cleansing. Yeah, we and do. That's right. You detoxing. have a lovely article in there. They can, um, they can start to look at their diet, and, and that's what it really takes. Are they eating a lot of cooked and processed foods that are devoid of vitamins, minerals, enzymes that are required for proper digestion and assimilation? They can look at that. Are they getting adequate fluid in their diet? And if so, is the source of the fluid a good source? In other words, is it spring water? or a lot of people in this area may have well water and, and it would be good to look at the mineral content and have the water looked at for uh, you know contaminants that may be contributing to their toxic load. Right. And then move towards a little bit incorporating a little bit more raw foods because that um, is a very critical, because our culture sort of uh, is, is surrounded by the, you know, are the aromas of food and cooked food presents with a lot of cultural implications and we have, we're really drawn towards cooked foods, especially being in a temperate climate or a non-temperate climate where it's yeah. cold all year. Yeah. So, I mean, when I make a soup, I make it from, with a real stock from scratch. It's not that hard to do. And I um, have a clean broth and I'll make some nice noodles and I'll put sprouts and squeeze lime juice and a little cayenne so you have and a salad with some nice dressing with some of the good fats and so looking at the diet adequate beverage intake lots of water herbal teas that assist with digestion and Such as? you can try mint tea uh, licorice anise tea is also very good um, and those can be sipped throughout the meal. Now, if you're using herbal teas, I just have a little tip, which is not to make them too strong because the, the longer you steep them, uh, the stronger they are, and let your senses guide you. And so a two to three minutes steeping with those type of herbal teas and not more than five minutes because then you're kind of going to the other extreme. In other words, it, uh, it's the tea has steeped too long and that's not good either. So those type of things and looking, reading, starting to read a little bit food labels um, and looking for things that are congesting trans fat, 
would be the biggest culprit. Yeah, that's a big... And has drawn a lot of attention no, no. recently. Yeah. yeah, for good reason. That's really something to avoid, isn't it? At all costs, because it just doesn't break down. <laughs> no, it's gumming up your whole system. Yeah. You know, it's better used in the um, petroleum industry as lubricant for, uh, uh, for motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, well, that's a very good good place to start then, and um, and if someone does have more questions, just part of what you do, correct, is you sit down with people, and if they have concerns about their nutrition, you kind of go over and help them evaluate and help them pinpoint exactly, because, you know, exactly what they should be doing and how to begin, and uh, you did bring some kits here. Yes. There are actually kits to help people. Now, well, these are something that you would do for them. Well, or I is do. Something they can purchase? You know, I, I I sort of treat each client as an individual, but I do assess their diet, and I do tell them where they can make uh, positive changes because they might not be ready for like a weekend cleanse. But I do give them all that information so that when they are ready, and as far as detox kits, I mean there are literally hundreds of detox kits on the market. Um, some are good. Some are. Um, you know, it depends on the individual, but I do have them at the clinic, and um, I've done a lot of research on them, so I do carry uh, from reputable um, corporations or reputable suppliers, targeting those main organs, as I would said, the kidney, colon, and liver. And this, for example, these are, um, it's a combination of, of four different herbs you would put it in your juice in the morning, and this is targeted towards the liver. It's included in this kit. And then you have the tea in here that's targeted towards the kidney, the specific herbs for the kidney. And then there's the, um, the fiber supplement there that's targeting the colon. And that's a complete kit. And it is 21 days, and there is a recipes that come with that. I, I sort of put that together myself for people to make oh, it easy. That's nice. And they can break it down into seven three day periods or, you know, in periods of a weekend if they're not going to do a twenty one day. And then the, the whatever negative ex things that they might experience wouldn't be quite as it would sort of tone it down. I gear it definitely okay. towards the individual and what their health status is uh, uh, yeah, at I guess the it present is a very time. individual. Thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's like elderberry kits and uh, there's, uh, like I said, there's so many different kinds of cleansing kits, and, and we go through it together, and they have, of course, the client has a say in it too because they're doing it. And then the Indican test for bowel toxicity is a test that we use to see how bad the bacterial population has shifted. Ah, oh, so definitely something to keep, uh, keep a grip on. And you do, you have, uh, you operate right out of Brighton as well as Peterborough? I work in Peterborough uh, for, for out of the Oasis uh, Health Clinic on Charlotte Street, and I do have my clinic in Brighton as well. Yeah, those two places are my main are my main focus. And we've put your information up so people can contact you and have a, a consultation with you. And you also do uh, cooking classes and all sorts of things just to help people really inform inform us about what we're putting in our body and what we should be putting in our body and <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, all my clients yeah. that come, they um, I do have a schedule now for the spring of um, seminars that, you know, one is on fats and then there's a, a few cooking seminars to help people because just to give them the information and send them on their way, that is, that's not enough. They need, they need some reinforcement, they need to get out there, they need to go to some lectures and cooking classes because things don't happen overnight, but over time and, and with, with reading different articles and that people will make positive changes and uh, towards uh, optimizing their health, which is very important in today's day and yeah. age with, uh, you know, with respect to, a, you know, you have to take responsibility, I call it empowerment, to empower yes. yourselves. Yes, to uh, take responsibility. I love that. I mean, it really does because it is our health.